If you want to make your presentation useful, give this a watch. Good morning. Happy Monday. I have Neural Coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right, time is short. Monday after vacation, always busy. Had two situations that came up. Cameron on the Coffee and Coaches conference call and then Christian um, on a quickie 15 minute console over the weekend, both working on presentations. And so literally we talked about physical structure of, of a presentation and how to make it useful, especially when you're, you're rather short on time and there's so much information that you want to, you want to give people and people get excited about my model and they want to talk about it and that's fine. Um, but again, you don't want to try to overwhelm people, especially with new information, because uh, your brain's only going to be able to absorb so much. There is fatigue that is associated with learning. And we'll give credit to John Medina for some of these ideas in regards to, to how to structure a talk. Um, he's a molecular biologist that, um, that studies such things as learning. Um, if you want to read his book, Brain, brain Rules, I believe, is, is the easier book to read. Um, anyway... So we're going to cut right into this stuff so you'll get to see literally how we, we talked it through, how to create the structure, how much time to spend on a topic, how many topics per hour, etc., etc. So hopefully you find this useful and um, we will see you guys tomorrow. Think about your audience, who you're talking to, and then what is most valuable for them to understand. So how much time do you have to talk to actually lay something out? Uh, I... I have I have probably about two hours or so, or a little over two. So okay, all right. So here's how you break this down. You get five things in each hour of lecture. Okay, that's it. Okay. Just so so now I've just limited your scope, right? Yeah. Because if you try to talk about more than five things in an hour, yeah. you've lost everyone. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So each of those five things get nine minutes. Each of those five things is structured as follows. I'm going to make a point. I'm going to give you a series of examples. And then I'm going to make a point. And then you get one minute to transition between those five things. You just made my life much easier with that framework. All right. Well, but that so so this is so this is actually based on on fatigue. So you can pound somebody with one topic and then they need a recovery phase. So the one minute transition is so you can get them from one point to the next, right? All right. So and then you have so you leave yourself 10 minutes for questions. I've started writing my PowerPoint for uh, the Lunch and Learn, and I want to run some ideas by you and sure. see what would be the most beneficial uh, ideas that I can share with therapists who are more used to the traditional ways of, of rehab and uh, who've never heard these kinds of ideas or, or thought of these ideas before. Mm -hmm. So uh, the objectives I have right now listed the first objective would be to just review axial skeleton mechanics during respiration. So, how much, and one second, how much time do you have? I have uh, forty-five minutes uh, to an hour at the okay for the lunch. Right. Go ahead, keep keep going on your object objectives. I just want to know how much time. You have. Yes, uh, my second one would be to discuss compression and expansion and the effects on mobility. So I would like to start with something very simple uh, as far as just like, you know, the bicep and the tricep compression expansion. And then I would like to go, uh, I, have a, I have a model where I have a rib cage from a transverse view and I have it cut in four and show compression and expansion along anterior and posterior and show them how that could cause rotations and changes in orientation. And... Um, and from there, I would discuss the primary compensations and the archetypes. I, I, that's, and I would describe how the very wide archetype will tend to have more compression along the posterior you aspect. Need, you don't need to explain the archetypes to me. They're mine. 
Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes that's right. <laughs> hit, hit, hit your bullet points. Hit okay. your bullet points so we can understand them. Yes. And then discuss table tests, the importance of reliability, their constraints, and how they can give you a bigger picture. So I would like to discuss that and, and have three or four good table tests that, um, that I can share with, with my team that they can use. Then discuss tips on how to cue for effective axial skeleton compression and expansion during respiration. So cueing techniques for, for the patients. And then the sixth objective would be choosing appropriate interventions and retesting. Okay, so you have, you have 45 minutes? I have uh, 45 minutes to an hour, yes. Okay, so do you have 45 minutes or do you have an hour? Uh, 50 minutes, let's say 15 minutes. Okay, so, so you only have time to talk about four things. Four things. That's all you have time for. You're gonna try to jam all of that information into 45 minutes. That's a, that's a three and a half day, right? That's a three and a half day. Right. Yes. That's that's what you've created, right? Yes. But there's no way, there's no way that you're going to be able to express that information to any degree of usefulness. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to you're going to have to narrow your your approach here just a little bit to something that is going to be useful. Because you don't have time. Like I said, you don't have time to express anything in enough detail for anybody to walk away and go, wow, I really need to reconsider my thought process. Got it. You don't have time for that. So narrow, narrow it down to four. You have, you, have, you, have, you have time to talk about four things. Four things. Four things. That's it. And it's not, and it's not four concepts. You have four things that you'll be able to, to make use of in that time frame. Because number one, it's like you have to pay attention. Well, you have to appreciate people's attention span. They're not going to be able to walk away with, with an overwhelm of, of all this information. That's right. That's just right. not possible. It's just not possible. You have, to, you, have to, you have to think about how people process that information. So four topics. Roughly, roughly, if you want to leave time for questions, You've got about nine minutes per topic. Mm -hmm. Nine minutes. You're going, make, you're going to make a point. And you're going to give an example or two. And then you're going to restate your point in another way to make it memorable. And then you have to figure out a transition into the next point. So you have basically four little talks inside of your big talk and then you leave time for questions so what would be most impactful for the people that you work with to walk away with that's the questions that you have to ask yourself when you're organizing this talk to make it useful like you can you can vomit up anything that you want right i mean you can throw terminologies and and everything and, and and it'll it'll seem you know somewhat interesting, but mostly just confusion. And if you do that, it's no longer useful, and people don't walk away with any interest whatsoever. So uh, you have to kind of decide: Do I want to sound smart because I can repeat information, mm -hmm. or do I want to give them something that might be useful? in regards to some form of a model that might allow them an advantage in regards to their ability to treat people. I see, I see. So, so I appreciate your enthusiasm. Yes. I, but <laughs> you're just gonna scare people away. That's right. And they're gonna think you're, you're FOS. Mm -hmm. right. So what you would want to do is you want to create a context. Okay. So you're going to, you're going to treat a theoretical patient and you're going to say, somebody walks in with this. 
Because the way that most therapists will think is, okay, somebody walks in with a shoulder impingement diagnosis, and then they break out the, they go to the shoulder impingement protocol sheets, and they pull it out of the file, and then they say, here's what we do week one, and this is your homework, because everybody knows that all shoulder impingements are the same. That's right. Right? Okay. But point being is now you have a context, you have a framework to apply what you just expressed to me as the points that you want to make. And you say, well, if I see this and I, say, I have this test, I have this test and I have this test and I already see this limitation in range of motion, then I know it means this or this, right? So I have a compressive strategy. I have, I have increased muscle activity that prevents the expansion from occurring in these areas when I would breathe in and out, that creates a limitation in this motion. So I have just taken your bullet points and I have applied it to a specific context that now people are going to go, well, that's useful. That's good to know. Now I know why this test would be positive. So when I say shoulder impingement and, and somebody says, oh, you have a positive Hawkins Kennedy test. Mm -hmm. And you say, Here's why that test is positive. You see the difference? Rather than, see, because what you are going to do is you are going to take information that, that I give away and you're going to repeat it, right? And then that's not useful for anybody in, in, within a context. If you had three days to explain things and build, build out the model to some degree, it might be more useful under those circumstances, but you don't have enough time for that. So take a specific context that everybody's familiar with and then show them the difference. I see, I see. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes that makes more sense. So I could use a, a case study in a way. Use a Correct. Case study. Much more useful. Much more useful. For, yeah. Again, for yeah. this type of a situation. You know, you have a limited amount of time. Show them, show them their language right you speak their language and then you move them towards what you want them to be interested in and then the questions will come and then the interest will grow and then you become useful versus just trying to seem really smart i like that idea i do like that idea so i could talk about the uh, the special test they use, for example, the Hawkins Kennedy. Well, again, I'm I'm just throwing out the shoulder thingy as a as a as an example. It could be anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what diagnosis that you're talking about. We could talk about sprained ankles, and you could say, you know, when you have swelling in the sinus tarsi, what you have now is a foot that is biased towards external rotation, which is why you see the electromechanical delay in the in the the, the lateral compartment of the lower leg. Right, I have eccentric orientation of musculature based on the position. This is why we can't reacquire dorsiflexion. Exactly. You see, and, and so, so again, it's like where do you where do you want to to take these people, right? And then use something that is familiar, because if you if you just speak in unfamiliarities, nobody cares. That's right. That's because right. they're they're going to make they're going to learn something by analogy, right? They already have. Whether they think so or not, they have a model on their head. Yes. And anything that interferes with that creates cognitive dissonance. And they're going to say, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not going to, I, I, I'm not even going to listen to you. Mm -hmm. Speak their language first. Meet them where they are. Meet them at their story and then move them towards where you want to go. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Because then you're not interfering. It's like you don't want to create interference. You want you want to help them, right? That's why you're doing this. I'm assuming that's why you're doing this. Yes, yes. I would I would like to help them. It was one of my therapists who saw the, the different interventions I was using, and um, they asked me if I could do an in service. Yeah. And so I'm trying to put something together that would be beneficial. So I do like that idea of the case right. study. Right. So four talks. Let's, let's do a quickie review. We only have a few minutes. Yes. Quickie review. Okay. Four small talks. Nine four minutes small. each. Nine minutes each. Yes. Right. You make your point. You give examples. And then you make your point. So it goes point, example, point. Mm -hmm. Four times. 
little transitions in between to get you from one point to another. Patient walks in, here's the findings. Step one. Step two, here's what those findings mean. Step three, here's where we're lacking shape change to allow this movement to occur. Step four, here's an intervention that I can show you will reacquire the internal rotation of the shoulder that caused the positive test in the first place. Talk done. Any questions?